given the long name i and only that i have 10 minutes since it's a position paper i won't go over the title again so as uh, silas mentioned this is time work with me and rao and uh, i like to believe this goes uh, at least touches on many of the aspects that were discussed in the panel today so i hope you guys will find it interesting so uh, to start with uh, uh, to start with Uh, at least um, kind of uh, to uh, more uh, like making some simplification on the community i would largely classify most of the work being done in xai into two groups one i'll just call uh, xai ml which includes a lot of work that's being done both in rl and single shot decision making on gen generating explanations for decisions made uh, through inscrutable systems and by that i mostly mean neural network uh, uh like a neural network uh, based systems and uh, like uh, people said in the uh, panel even though i wrote it uh, independently it, it's the problem is you're faced with an alien intelligence and you're trying to make sense of the reasoning and you have no shared vocabulary to begin with to kind of make sense of what was being discussed so uh, Uh, barring a few uh, exceptions like uh, uh, Dr. Bean Kim's work we saw earlier, most of the work uh, seems to focus on low-level uh, explanations, and by that I mean like a lot of feature attribution explanation, a lot of saliency maps, right? So this is like a famous example from this paper called Line, where they show, okay, how did you classify it as a dog? And they say, oh, these parts, and it helps in debugging. Just so, okay, they looked at the snow, that's why it's wrong. So a lot of explanations like that. and then we have xcip uh, work which i suppose you've been listening to throughout the day and uh, a lot of the focus here is on explaining decisions that's being made through uh, like uh, many a times handcrafted models doesn't have to be but like that's uh, um, usually the case and we usually assume a common shared vocabulary as the starting point right and the explanations focuses in many case either uh, uh, reconciling any model differences or helping the people make sense of the decision because of any possible inferential differences right people just can't make sense of the the, the large search space and we are just trying to help them to understand why these explanation makes sense so here is an like a simple example let's let's a model reconciliation ex example to which basically says within like symbolic terms uh, that uh, the reason i couldn't pick up the purple block is because purple block is uh, not light and i can only pick up light blocks so those kind of explanations are plenty in in, in the both in this community and and like xip as as matter um so what we want to do right we want to in a sense try to bridge these two uh, Uh, areas of work and why do we want to do that because both comes with their own strengths right so xai ml uh, deals with incredibly complex systems right they are capable of making very complex decisions and we would want to uh, like uh, approach those kinds uh, be able to provide explainability to many of those systems and that's a useful thing to aim at and where xaip uh, like excel set is all the techniques we have developed there are multiple all we've been hearing about all these great explanatory works and lot of these analysis work that we could bring forth right to explain these other complex models and i don't at least in this paper i would want to make the case that these are in reconcilable differences as in that there is some kind of unbridgeable difference between these two threads of work so I, i'll make i'll try to make the case that a part of the differences comes from the background or uh, historical reasons on how these uh, like different areas looked at like the kind of approaches they use and the reason they use uh, like uh, the the kind of reasoning they use and stuff like that so this is a slide that i kind of stole from that that uh, kind of uh, talks about this quote from uh, jeffrey hinder who call symbols are the luminous uh, luminiferous ether of ai uh, we don't know if that's true or not but one thing we are really damn sure about is that we talk in terms of symbols right in our everyday lives we talk in terms of concepts relationship between concepts and that's how we explain things to others right we very rarely unless it's like a very simplistic thing we really point to things and say okay the reason why i did this was that right like we talk talk in terms of complex concepts and the relationship between objects and things like that so i i i won't belabor this point too much but 
at least I, I hope everyone here agrees uh, the fact that using symbolic explanations have a lot of advantages and uh, like least of which is the fact that people generally find it easier to understand. And this is not just, you don't have to take my word for it. There are a lot of studies, both from our group and outside that have shown that people have an easier time kind of understanding like concept-based explanation as opposed to just saliency map-based one, right? And not to mention just the fact that like, it's, it's hard, like for a sequential decision-making problem, just uh, kind of coming up with just like uh, highlights over the different state, like a, st a video of the behavior to show something is suboptimal. It's just it's going to be too hard for people to make sense of. So we want symbolic explanations. So how do we get there? At least the case uh, I want to uh, put forth uh, or we want to put forth in this uh, talk and our position paper is this idea of let's, take these learned models, these inscrutable models uh, or simulators or whatever they have, and let's build symbolic approximations of it. And then we use, and these symbolic approximations have to be specified in terms that people understand, and then use these models and the method we developed in our community to solve them, right? Uh, so the central problem we are posing as the, the thing that we need to overcome is this problem of vocabulary mismatch. It's not a question that our uh, models are kind of lacking in their representational power and things like that. It's just uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, the system, the learned models or the simulated things are may just not be expressed in terms that people understand. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what in what kind of concepts do people think about it. Part of this we saw in Dr. Bean Kim's talk as well, and then use those concepts to kind of build an approximation of the, the, the system that the agent might be using. And this is what we'll call as uh, solving the, like, the vocabulary mismatch problem, and then use these approximate models to come up with um, explanations. So here is like, an, like, an, like, a, um, like, a, like a stratospheric overview of what explanations generation in this scenario would look like. I, I'll, through the rest of the talk, based on how much time I have, what I would like to do is kind of uh, try to uh, like talk about what are the open challenges that needs to be needs to be solved to kind of get to a place where we can use these kind of symbolic uh, approximations to generate explanations and the different factors that relate to it. So what I'll do in the rest of the talk is kind of break this entire pipeline into different parts and then kind of talk about how these parts can be like realized uh, with our current techniques. Okay, so uh, um, I'll be just using Montezuma's Revenge. It's a popular RL framework as just the motivating example, and sometimes I'll refer to it whenever possible. So the first thing, right? Uh, we have a system which has like a, a, like a complex model that's using a complex model to reason about its decisions and tasks. And the first thing we need, like I was saying is, get the vocabulary from the user. Vocabulary, here I'm referring to things like action labels, uh, uh, state factors, and things like that. And then try to learn those. So in the case of something like Montezuma's events, the, uh, it would be like, if you are like specifically focusing on state factors, it would be things like uh, concepts like uh, uh, like the, the agent, that's the Joe, it's called the Panama Joe, that's the game character, is on the highest platform. Or it could be some concept like uh, the Panajo is holding a key and things like that, right? So we need to first get it from the the uh, user in in terms that they actually think about these concepts. And the way we'll do it is very similar to what uh, way we can do it is very similar to what Dr. Bean Kim was talking about in terms of specifying these concepts as positive and negative examples. So we'll say here are a bunch of positive examples where. Uh, Panama Joe is holding a key, and here is a bunch of negative examples uh, where uh, he is not. And now let's build a classifier uh, for this concept. And once we have access to a classifier, uh, what that means is we can now start talking about uh, uh, like which state has these concepts. So we basically have a way of factorizing the state and seeing, okay, these state contains these, uh, these proportional facts are true in these states. And now we can think about, talk about how do we build models out of it? So the next obvious part is the model learning one. So our community, I guess community has a bunch of different works on learning models. 
unfortunately none of them is the full correct answer for the problems here because most of them are built on the assumption that you have a complete set of state fluents and the specification of these state fluents are more or less uh, 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 like correct and complete so even works that look at like noisy uh, uh, traces they are usually talking about noise in terms of actions rather than uh, like the initial state specification or goals and things like that so this is one of the core uh, 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 the core things you will see here because when you are asking people to give us concepts it's very unlikely that at the beginning they would tell us everything that's relevant to the problem right they might give us some things because they don't really have a full understanding of the task even if they know all the relevant concepts they may not give it up front and since we are using a learned classifier as a way to pay for the system to operationalize those concepts they may be noisy as well okay now you can talk about these other works that tries to learn their own um, uh, um learn their, uh, their own like uh, symbols and stuff like that so there are a few works missing here i just realized it now but uh, we can just uh, uh, even in this case you know um, uh, this is not the full answer because there's no guarantee that any of these things are going to learn things that are interpretable for people they right? will just learn a symbol so in general here when we are talking about model learning for the setting we need a new paradigm for model learning which is basically things that can handle incomplete vocabulary that are able to quantify its uncertainty about learn models so right? you say that maybe it's not uh, completely correct and then be able to use it later on and then it's also um, the fact that it's for explanation also gives us new opportunities right like as we were talking in the panel right we don't have to learn exact models we can learn approximations we can learn abstractions and it could even be conditioned on the questions that are being asked right we don't have to learn everything up front um okay uh, now in the case of explanation generation there are additional challenges here as in like how do you detect when you're generating explanation if it is uh, if uh, you're getting this explanation because this is a real explanation or because your model is faulty and things like that so the explanation module has to take into account the un uncertainty of the learned model and here also the question that steve asked like what is this explanation used for is also very relevant and i would point to a lot of people to this paper from uh, dr pat langley like in uh, itaps 2019 which kind of talks about preference and process accounts which are extremely relevant in this case and there's also a question of okay you gave the uh, human started with a set of concepts it's incomplete i just can't generate an explanation based on this concept how do we get new uh, vocabulary so this whole question of how do we uh, uh, acquire new concepts and in this case we can even rely on some kind of low level explanation to speed up the process i think style knows is saying i'm running late so i'll just uh, speed through the <laughs> speed through the slides so uh and there are a lot more challenges if people are interested in looking at this uh, there are like things that are very hard like what happens if a person doesn't have a concept that is enough to explain things the decision so it's it's coming back to the question of ips right how do you teach someone a new concept uh, how do you provide soundness guarantees how do you allow like uh, what this thing was talking about we need symbolic interfaces that allows people to give their preferences right so can we use these kind of post hoc learn models to give those kind of preferences right um and also we are getting these concepts from people so we want to be uh, like learn these concepts as effectively as possible with least amount of input so, so i can keep going on and on but uh, due to the lack of time i won't uh, just want to plug a paper where this is not a complete solution at least we've looked at parts of it and try to kind of concretize it in a specific setting so if you guys are more interested maybe you can take a look and see like what else you could bring to the table thank you so much